This is KXP, 90.3 FM, KXP.org, listener-powered radio, broadcasting live from Mexico City at Panoram Studios in partnership with Normal. We've got an excellent band kicking off our broadcast, Mexican Institute of Sound. Mexican Institute of Sound, all the way from Mexico City, this tiny village. I'm 
amigos de la calle me dijeron que no vine a pasear Que estuviera bien atento, la lucha libre está por comenzar Una caída, dos caída, tres caída, cuatro voladores como una caída Dos caída, tres caída, cuatro voladores That's el, el jefe, and we are the Mexican Institute of Sound, and it's a pleasure to be uh, with you guys. Something like this.
Ah, so we're the Mexican Institute of Sound, and we are. In case you're not tuning in, we're on KEXP all the way to the world from Mexico City. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Here it comes. KEXP live at Panoram Studios in Mexico City. Camilo, everyone, thank you so much. Mexican Institute of Sound. Oh, yeah. Represent. Thank you. Thank you. you. This is KEXP 90.3 FM, KEXP.org. Now back to the midday show, Cheryl Waters. My name is Chili from KEXP here in Panoram Studios in Mexico City. Just had an amazing session from Mexican Institute of Sound, and I'm happy to be joined by Mr. Camilo Lara. Thank you so much for doing the session today, and thanks for hanging out. Thank you. It's been such a wild, amazing, fun experience. I enjoyed it a lot. You were the perfect choice to kick off our live sessions. Perfect band to pick. We're going to do 16 Mexican bands in total, and I'm so glad it was you. Brought the energy up immediately, and it was tons of fun. Thank you. Well, it's it's good. I, I think with that uh, curatorial uh, set of bands you have, you're going to have a nice taste of uh, what is Mexican alternative scene. This, I think it's very exciting and it's fun. Uh, different sounds, uh, so it's cool. I've been listening to your music for a long time. In fact, we were just talking about the last time we, or the first time we met, actually down here in Mexico City. I think every believed you know. Yeah, you sneak into my house, and uh, you break into my room, you eat my Cheerios, and you slept on my bed. You did invite me to your house, <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> Sounds horrible, sorry. No, <laughs> no that's, uh, it's sorry, right. I, my English is not my first language, so... <laughs> that's not, not my mine either. <laughs> no, but it was super fun. And um, my girlfriend at the time was with me, she's like, oh my god, I think that's coffee to cut. And I was like, okay, cool. 
Um, <laughs> let's, let's hang out. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you, sir. Your first time live on KDXP. Uh, you started musically doing remixes, is that correct? For your friends' bands? Yeah, I guess my f I started doing remixes for... I did one remix for Café Tacuba and a f bunch of friends that were around at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, and a label in Spain told me, like, hey, you should do a remix for one of my bands. I did a remix, they liked it, and they told me, like, hey, do you have music? I was like, music on my own. Oh, sounds exciting. So I started sending them music, and um, they they hated it. They completely hated my music. At that um, time, were you blending traditional stuff, or you just yeah? I was doing what I was, uh -huh. what I'm still doing. Uh, but that they, they told me like, oh, you need to work a lot, and so I went back to my house and uh, start working with my computer. But I ran out of memory, and I didn't have more space to do new music. So I just wait two weeks and send the same songs in a different order. Mm -hmm. And they listened to that, and they said, oh my god, this is genius. Like, we have to release it. Okay. That's how I released my first album. Nice. <laughs> uh, which is, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, so I, by accident, I started doing music. Um, and since then, I have a bunch of albums, and I've been mm -hmm. working and um, producing a lot doing remixes and stuff. What's cool is it's not just a, a mix of traditional Mexican sounds and electronica. You're obviously a hip hop and a reggae fan, and that fusion all together really makes it unique. Um, there's plenty of stuff that's a classic cumbia with beats behind it, but you really have a bunch of genres that you're putting together in a unique sound, and it's it's really cool. Well, it uh, doesn't matter what I wanted to sound. I I wanted to sound like Kraftwerk or De La Soul or The Clash. And I end up sounding like Perez Prado. Uh, that's my curse uh -huh. and my gift. Yeah, at blessing. The same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have done five albums up until now? Yes. With Disco Popular, <clears throat> the last one in 2017. Yes. Yeah, I've been uh, um, I've been doing that. I also have a couple of side projects. Uh, oh, yeah, you have the um, project with Toy Selector as well. Uh, yeah, pr uh, an album with it, Toy and I. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, um, a Mexican reimagination of uh, Morrissey songs called Mex Yes, uh, so very cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. You like to collaborate, not only in different projects, but in your own work as well. And you've now been traveling some to Jamaica and meeting other musicians. Tell me about collaboration, what, what that means to you. Um, I. I did my first albums on my own, recording on my own, without not not so much m knowledge of what was the studio about. So I kind of learned, spent seven years learning how to do it, mm -hmm. and when I felt capable of doing it, I was like, oh, we should start doing some things with uh, other artists, and uh, I kind of got hooked on that, and, um, and since the last five years I've been collaborating with a lot of artists and trying to travel and do a musical journey and I think my albums have become this kind of a, a footprint of what I do over the year traveling and, and the last, especially the last two three albums uh, it's like a journey uh, and I like that I, I think it's more fun and um, push me to do things the way I'm not used to do it. Mm -hmm. What's in the works now? Got some more music or sketches? Coming up, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so excited to. Um, I'm just about to finish my new album. Um, I've been uh, obsessed with Mexico City as the theme, mm -hmm. so it's I guess it's like my love letter to Mexico City. Uh, I don't know if you know, but Mexico City changed the name from DF, mm -hmm. Distrito Federal, to CDMX, which I hate. Um, and in a way, it's changing that much. Like it's it's a whole different uh, city from what you see in Roma, the movie, to now. So I guess I'm writing that, and I've been working with a bunch of people, like from uh, Dan the Automator, which is a great producer. Um, uh, so I've been also traveling a lot and, and doing uh, my love letter to the city that I loved, it, which is Mexico City. Very cool. So the vibe and the branding, perhaps, of the city is changing. But like musically, how do you feel about what's happening? There's obviously uh, tons of different genres and projects here. But currently, 
how, how do you feel about the scene and what kind of things are you excited about? Well, besides the gentrification of the whole city, I think um, underneath there is a beautiful, great community that we have. It's, it's kind of a, it's growing a lot, but at the same time it's small enough for us to meet, to know each other. Uh, so it's very healthy and I think there's a lot of great things going on and um, not only in, as musicians uh, but festivals and uh, journalists and radios and press and so it, I think it's a whole a community that is is growing and it's uh, learning how to have uh, our own personality which is the most important thing in these days that everything is kind of generic and, and everything's pretty much the same everywhere. Thank you so much for doing Thank this you. session. Thanks for talking with me. Thanks for all the great music. I look forward to more. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.